Hey, hi, hello. Welcome to the Flow with the Grow podcast. As always, if you're new here, welcome back. And sorry, if you're new here, welcome. If you have been listening, welcome back. Happy freaking almost February. That's pretty wild that it's almost February already. Days and weeks just kind of fly by, it seems. Um, so if you're new here, this is the podcast for all things wellness, health, nutrition, fitness, but also kind of just life in general, kind of like a life coach podcast, I guess. And I set out to help you in having actionable things that you can do, whether it is on fitness, nutrition, or maybe it is just day-to-day life. Maybe it is something around mindset, mental health, or maybe just episodes of inspiration a little pep talk, a little encouragement, just something to help fuel your day, to help fuel your mind in a positive way or in a relatable way, right? Because I don't have, not every single episode is all positive. I want to be real and I want it to be something where it can, you can be really, where you can relate to me in some way, even if it's something that is not as positive in the moment, but helping you to see the positive in any situation, any challenge, that silver lining, um, or even just to honor the feelings that you have in whatever situation you're going through. Today, I want to share with you a couple of reminders and then also a bit on simplifying nutrition. There are a few things that have come up recently and I just want to share it on the podcast. I shared it to my social medias, but again, I just want to share it to my podcast And uh, I'm going to also dive deeper into simplifying nutrition in my free Facebook group called Food Freedom and Muscle Building Solutions. That link will be in the show notes. And if you are wanting in and you're not in, just shoot me a DM or find that link and click on it and ask to join. And I would love to have you. I go live every Wednesday on a specific topic to do a training, usually about 30 minutes. I don't like to keep it too much longer than that. So I respect your time and so that it is something that is digestible and that you can walk away from confident knowing that you can implement one or two things from that talk. I also create free guides, answer questions. We just have a lot of fun in there, really. So if you are wanting to join that, again, go ahead and click that link in the show notes. Reminder number one. All right, this is about accountability. Now, there is a reason why there's a distinct difference between those who stay consistent and get results those who are inconsistent and kind of sort of get results, and those who stay stuck in the same place with no results. So it's either you have that accountability, you're consistent, you get results, or the other spectrum where you don't have accountability, you're inconsistent, you kind of get results, you stay stuck. And then you're just kind of spinning your wheels over and over again, month to month, year after year. Accountability freaking works. Stop trying to figure it out on your own when you have no idea where to start or what to do. It's okay to ask for help. It's okay to invest in that help. Like this is something that can change your entire life, not just your physical body, but your day-to-day life and your family, your future family, anyone who is around you, your work life. Like this is something that truly affects everything. And I have noticed time and time again that those who stick with it and those who get results, who have success are the ones that also have accountability. I don't care what accountability, wow, I don't care what accountability source it is, just get accountability. Whether it is a coach, whether it is a trainer, whether it is a friend you're going to the gym with, a workout buddy, a family member, like just something. I will say that when you put skin in the game, aka money, when you invest, you are a lot more likely to stick to it and you're more likely to work harder. That's just, it is what it is. It is a fact of life. And it's important because not only will you stay consistent in in the long, you know, short-term, long-term, whatever, whatever you'll get results, but, or you should at least, but the times when you feel like it's not working, you get discouraged, the months or weeks where it's just an off week or an off day, like you have someone there to help pull you back in, to help you talk through it, give you ideas, bounce ideas back and forth. Like that's why they're there, whoever that accountability person is. So just please keep that in mind moving forward. Accountability is the bridge from where you are now to where you want to be. Don't be stuck in the same place a year from now. All right, next reminder. I personally have come a long way in my journey when it comes to how I view health, how I view fitness and nutrition, 
movement, exercise, my body, the relationship that I have with food, the relationship that I have with body, my body and exercise. Like I, I, I know and I'm confident that I've come a long way. And health is different to every person. And I want to share with you my viewpoint on what being health conscious can look like, because I think that there can be a lot of things on social media where it's like, you, okay, here's the deal. Uh, yes, I'm a stickler for ingredients when I'm looking at different supplements or packaged food items. I personally like to stay away from things that have like the dyes, like red dye, blue number, whatever. I like to stay away from artificial flavors and natural flavorings. And like, I'm, I love learning about that type of thing. But also I know that I can't be, obs- I can't become obsessive with that again. And it is okay to not be super obsessive with it. Whereas I know some social media content and people like, they're like, you have to stay away from that. And they, and they do. And like, awesome props to them. It like works for them. And some people love that. And some people need to see more of that. But I want to be the person to also share with you the other side of it. And that is that you can be health conscious and still eat a couple cookies. You can be health conscious and still drink a glass of wine or two or three. You can be health conscious and only work out a couple times a week or once a week or take a break from working out. Like maybe you're in a season of your life where you're just not working out as much and that's okay. You can be health conscious and still have a day where you go off your meal plan, don't eat as healthy as you set out to or you're trying to. You can be health conscious and still choose to not make or get that, quote, healthier alternative. Like it can be so easy to get wrapped up in how health should lurk, look, lurk, <laughs> look, especially with social media. But the reality is, like I said, is that it's different for every person. And looking after your mental health and your emotional health is still health. So for me, I can't just say I can't have cookies or I can't have um, certain foods. Like I can't do that restriction anymore. So I am looking after my mental health. I'm looking after my emotional health. And that is still health. I can still be health conscious and do those things. Yes, would I be healthier if I didn't drink as much wine as I do? Yeah, I get that. But I know that going into it. And it's not like I drink every single night or anything. Like, yes, I'm a coach and I teach people health and staying accountable with their goals. But again, that's gonna look different for every person, including myself. And the last reminder, before I go into some tips for simplifying nutrition, I have talked recently with a few few people, a few ladies specifically at the gym that I work part-time at called Burn Bootcamp. And I'm just... I'm so glad that we talked about this, that we had this conversation because I am reminded again that this is still happening, that I still need to talk about it. And maybe this is just kind of a reminder or something that needs to get pounded into your head even more. Maybe you know this, but you're not doing it because if you were in that generation where everything was low fat, low carb, low calorie, fat free, um, step on the scale all the time, restrict certain foods, like no carbs and you lived that way for so long, like years and years, it's not going to be easy just to get a snap out of that mindset. Even if you know those things and you know that you should work out of that, or maybe it's the all or nothing mentality, but it's still good to hear this reminder. And uh, if you haven't heard this yet, or if you, this is kind of health and is kind of new to you, I want you to know this. Okay. You might be questioning yourself whether you should eat less carbs, eat no carbs, eat less calories, eat low calorie Eat, ge- eat less in general, like not necessarily counting your calories, but just eat less in general. Or maybe you should do keto or fasting or more cardio or like there's so many things out there. There's so much hype around different things. And here's the deal. Like, yes, you 100% need to be eating in a calorie deficit in order to lose weight or body fat, but the way you do it matters. If you've been eating under 2,000 calories for years, or if you're not tracking that or tracking macros, totally fine, don't even have to. But if you know that you're not really eating much throughout the day, then you know that's a sign that it is maybe too little. And then trying to continue to eat less and restrict foods is not the way, if that's the case. 
And I bet that if this is you, you're feeling stuck, you're feeling low energy, you're feeling hungry all the time. Maybe not hungry at all anymore. Maybe you're gaining weight. Maybe you're just not able to lose weight. And by this point, the belief that you need to eat less and avoid carbs and restrict foods might be so ingrained into your subconscious that fear sets in anytime you think about eating more or eating carbs, or letting go of food restriction, or trying to not have the all or nothing mentality, and maybe even stepping on the scale, like the number on the scale going up, right? So number one, not only do you probably need to increase your food intake, and maybe you know that, but you also need to work on your mindset and probably need to stop over complicating things, which is going to lead into my next topic here. But like I said, there's so much hype around all of the keto, fasting, Weight Watchers, plant-based, high protein, low carb, low calorie, less fruit, low fat, juicing, do this, do that. And people promoting a one way that works best or promoting a certain product or supplement or like something to help you get these fast results. And I want to encourage you to start saying no to trying that next fat diet or start saying no to trying that next thing and take a break from trying to be in a diet and see what happens when you provide your body with more nutrients, when you get rid of the scale. And I totally know like this is so much easier said than done. But uh, another reason why this kind of sparked my um, interest and my, not interest, but this episode, I guess, is like I said, I've been talking to some ladies at Burn Bootcamp, and I also work with people within Burn to help with their nutrition. And this one particular woman, she likes tracking macros. She's been doing it, but it was at a, like a crazy, it was not balanced whatsoever. And it was having her eat little carbs. And with as much as she's working out and whatever she's doing, like I knew initially right away that she needed to increase her carbs. And so I did just that. I balanced out her protein and her fats. We increased her carb intake and bam, less than a week. So within a few days, she had more energy. Like she came into the gym. She's like, I have more energy. She feels better. She's not starving. She's enjoying food. Like she's not restricting certain foods and it feels good to have carbs. And she's just feeling better overall. So I must also note that every situation and individual is unique and different and should be approached in that way. Unique and different with then other people when coming up with a plan. So leading into my next topic, simplifying nutrition. So that way you're not trying to think about, okay, should I do, okay. And there is a time and a place for doing, you know, lower carb or higher protein or higher fat, like whatever. But that's where it goes into the more specific individualized approach. If you're working with someone, a coach, a trainer, whoever it is. But if you are just someone who you it just feels complicated. Nutrition feels complicated. You're just trying to be healthier. You're trying to do all of these things, but you're not sure what to do. Then keep listening. Number one, you might just be overthinking it. Like get out of your head and I want you to just focus on a few things. First and foremost, before you start thinking about or trying to take away certain foods, like whether it is salty foods, sweet foods, pop, like highly processed foods, like whatever food that is kind of like your vice or you feel like you eat a lot of and you want to eat less of that, before you do that, before you're looking to taking away anything or another common one, I guess, is bread um, or pastas. Okay, before you take away anything, I want you to start thinking about what can you add more of? I know I talk about this a lot in the podcast, but what can you add more of? Okay, here are some really good options. Number one, water, drinking more water. Oftentimes drinking more water will result in drinking less pop or juice or coffee or whatever it is. Number two, eating more fruits. Number three, eating more vegetables. Number four, eating more proteins. Okay, and when I say fruit, vegetables, and proteins, I want you to think about the whole foods. So, Fruit is a whole food. Vegetables are a whole food. Proteins, which by the way, I'm actually going to attach my macro cheat sheet, which is going to give you options for fruit, uh, pr- not fruit, proteins, fat, and carbs. So that way, if you need an idea of different foods that you can eat, you can simply and easily choose from there. So we're thinking about adding more, more fruits, more vegetables, more water, more protein. I mentioned whole foods. So when we have like carbs, for example, or fats, like we can get whole food sources like avocado from, uh, fats from an avocado or carbs from rice, pasta. But when we're eating more of those whole foods, 
we're going to eat less of the highly processed packaged foods. Okay, the next way to keep it super simple, super basic is when you are trying to put together a meal, like if you're meal prepping for lunch, dinner, breakfast, whatever, try to pair together a protein, a carb, and a vegetable. Okay, you can also throw in fats as well, especially if you like nuts or avocados, or if you cook with olive oil, avocado oil, things like that. But when you are building your plate or your bowl or your meal, that's how you can think of it. A protein source, a carb source, and a vegetable source. And this will also help to balance out that meal. I know that there's so many great recipes out there and we want to keep the variety, but also it's super important to just keep things basic. Like sometimes I think that we get too caught up in needing to find different recipes and to do all, like it's kind of daunting. Like, okay, we have all these recipes out there. There's Pinterest, there's Instagram, there's Google. There's so many options out there, right? Well, let's just bring it back to the basics and keep it simple to start with. And lastly, release the rules, release the food rules of that food restriction of telling yourself that you can't have certain foods. Like if we just focus on adding more of those things that I talked about and then alongside that movement, it could be a workout at the gym, it could be going for a walk, it could be stretching, yoga, like just adding some sort of movement that will go a long ways. And you can always down the road, like dive deeper into that nutrition or, you know, invest in that coach or trainer, like to kind of, to get more accountability and to get help with more knowledge around that aspect. But today, like I just, if you are focusing on health overall, you're just starting out, you have no idea where to start, just consider these and just get outside of your head, get out of your head, bring it back to the basics and to that simplicity. Like I said, I will link in the show notes my free Facebook group, group a community, my free macro cheat sheet guide to help you with choosing different foods when it comes to protein, fat, and carbs. And if this was helpful in any way, send it to a friend, put it up on your social media. And by the way, if there's any topics ever that you want to learn more about or you have questions on, feel free to slide into my DMs to email me or just let me know of any topic that you would like me to cover. Again, I'm going to kind of dive deeper into the simplified nutrition in that Facebook group this week. So make sure you're in there. And if you're not, requ- request to join or let me know. All right. As always, thank you for being here. I appreciate you. I love you. And with that, I hope you have a great rest of your day, night, week, weekend. Bye for now. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of Flow with the Grow. I'll see you next week for your daily dose of positivity and growth.